morning and welcome everyone out there. You <laughs> used to say TV land. <laughs> On live stream land. We have song leaders here today. We've got Allendale and the Wooldridges. And you get to join us this morning in a song by Bill Weathers called Lean On Me. Even if you can't really lean on us, we're here for you. Here we go. living in beautiful San Clemente. Woke up this morning thinking, thank you God for this beautiful day. So I want each and every one of you to know that you are loved, you are welcome here, and just call on us. <laughs> we're here for you. So we're going to start this morning like we start every Sunday service, is with an opening affirmative prayer. So join me. I, you, he, she, we, we are one. There is only one divine presence. There is only one infinite intelligence. There is only one glorious love. And this one permeates the entire universe. It is saturated in this energy of God and I know that each and every one of us feels that divine energy and knows that divine energy lives and moves and expresses through each one of us we are the beloved we are the divine expression of this glorious energy it happens with our every thought our every action every movement Everything we do 
is an expression of the divine. And so this morning I decree and I know that all is well, that each one of us are in our divine right place at this moment, that we are aware, we are alive and we are awake to this glorious moment of love. And we are here on purpose. That purpose is to connect, to be, to love, to express this divine essence. And I so, so I know that this morning, this service unfolds in divine right order. Everything is perfect. Every person that hears this service Here's this message from Dr. Heather. Is inspired, is enlightened, and is lifted up spiritually. I know that the power of her word comes into each one of us and glorifies who we are. And so, knowing that I speak this truth and the truth does set us free, set us free and connects us with each other for we are aware our attention is on this presence and so I place it into divine mind knowing it's already been correct and already been created exactly according to each of our own belief and so my heart is full of gratitude and love full of thanksgiving for this time together for this life together, for this joy together. And so I anchor this prayer as I release it and let it go. We say together, and so it is. Now we'll read our Declaration of Principles together. Are we going to light the flames of faith? No. no. Our affirmation first. Okay, we'll do our affirmation first. I am an essential part of a community that blesses each other. Sees holiness in the all life and is committed to be listeners and learners. We understand that oneness is not sameness. The beloved community is revealed when we love each other. And so it is. And now our Declaration of Principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence, operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. Now we are going to light the flames of faith. It's no longer a call to service, now it is a declaration of oneness. We know that this one acknowledges all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come forth from the one great universal presence which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. 
We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ Consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. As Reverend Judy Chapman now lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. And now we're going to go into our meditation time and we're being led into the meditation by Wade Wildridge and Diane King Ban. And you may join them singing a uh, blessing to the world. of being a blessing to the world by turning within and allowing the ideas to simply float in our consciousness, float in the place of pure light, pure joy, pure principle. This thing itself 
is right where each one of us is. And so we are a blessing to the world. In this holy moment of right now, I invite you to bring to mind some of the people who are a blessing to you. See them sitting around you, beside you, and just silently give thanks for each one this one that gives so much, whose life force is the life force of the divine, is blessing you and is a blessing to the world. And then putting your attention on your heart space and letting it fill with love, with truth. By being the heart, you are a blessing to the world. By living from love, you are a blessing to the world. Give thanks for your ability to love and to bless. And then bring your attention to your hands. Your beautiful hands that do so much. And just think back to this last week of what you have done using your hands, holding a baby, brushing a kitten, waving goodbye, building something, planting a garden, weeding a garden, vacuuming, dusting, all of the things you could have been doing, washing dishes. Those hands truly are a blessing to you and to the world for all the good that you do, for all the beauty you create. So see yourself now in the many acts of kindness and service that you have been doing. And now gently put your attention on your throat, on that area that allows you to speak. And think of the words that you have spoken that have been blessings. They're words filled with optimism and hope, words filled with truth and love. And even if you didn't speak them, if you wrote them, if you thought them, they're still a blessing to the world. And imagine, first of all, yourself being blessed by those words. And then all of the people around you being blessed by those words. There is only truth, there is only love, there is only God. And now in a, the silence for a few seconds, let yourself see those blessings that you have established, that you have given. See them going out past your family, past your circle of friends, out into the community, 
out into the nation, out encircling the globe, out into the universe, and be with that idea for a few minutes. Gently bring your attention back to where you are. Get fully back into your body if you've been out and about and bring your attention back to the service. And now Wade Woldridge and Kimberly Woldridge are going to sing a beautiful song to set us up. Thank you, Wade. That's a great song. I like it.
Things keep getting better because life keeps getting better because our consciousness keeps elevating. Ah. My message this morning is the end of the, the um, theme that Reverend Judy started, which is inclusive, inclusivity in action, inclusive in action. And this one is called We Are. We Are. We Are, and it really is about us, our community, our center. It's about you and me and all the rest of us. It's about us on Sundays. It's about us on every other day of the week. It's who we are, who we have come here to be, and what, why we're here at all. I wanted just, I, I was looking at some memes for um, coronavirus, and one of the things that really caught my funny bone was the, um, it had been written, I think, in May, but it said, yes, 2020, what a year, leap year was, February was 29 days, and then March was 300 days, and then <laughs> April was five years. <laughs> I thought about that, and I thought, September should be somewhere in 2040 or something like that, if we're going that way, maybe it would be able to tell me, but anyway, Sometimes it feels like that. It has been challenging to be on, on target, to be mindful, to be fully aware. And yet, if we practice what we believe, if we practice the presence, if we practice telling the truth with love, who we have come here to be is full of joy, full of peace. I wore my dancing shoes today because last week, Wearing those heels, I got stopped and I couldn't go any further. <laughs> and it was really funny. I felt like I felt like a Donald Duck or something trying to waddle off. My feet were really sore, so now I have flats on, and that's just fine. I can move around all I like. Anyway, back to the we are. We are here to express. We are here to be joyful. We are here to be here for one another to express our grief for people who lose things, we, to express our condolences. We are here to comfort. And then we're here to understand that even though we have a living in a challenging time, who knew that we signed up for this? And yet, because of what we believe, we must have. We must have signed up for the advanced course in creativity. We must have, right? We must have, because here we are having to improvise and grow and do things in a different way so that we can include our whole community, so that we can include each one and be together. I'm going to tell two stories from, the, um, from Rachel Naomi Remen's book, My Grandfather's Blessings. They are on point, I think. So the first one I'm going to tell is... Um, she was talking about ha working with um, a young man who was given the diagnosis, he was 19, and he was given the diagnosis that there was a mass in his thigh, in, around the thigh bone, and that it was rapidly growing, and that he needed to have his leg amputated or he was sure to die. Well, he, he and his parents heard the news and they discussed it and left it up to him. And he said, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do it. And uh, Rachel supported him uh, in doing what he thought he needed to do. Well, the only thing he did allow, because there was no extreme anything, there, weren't, there wasn't chemo, there wasn't radiation, there, weren't, there wasn't anything, but his pastor asked if they, his congregation could pray for him. Every night at 7 o'clock, the congregation was praying for this young man for his perfect health. And after a few months, he hadn't died. And the tumor had not grown. It had actually started shrinking. And a few more months, it had shrunk some more. Fast forward to 10 years later, he didn't have, it was completely gone. It was completely gone. The tumor was gone. And um, 
Rachel didn't, she was pleased for him. She knows that, you know, that that's what we call non-local, non-local procedures. So it's a, lo a local procedure, is a, a physical procedure. A non-local procedure would include thought and prayer and things that we can't often explain. So 20 years now had gone by and she thought, I wonder if his doctor ever found out that the tumor just disappeared. And so she called the doctor, she found him uh, she didn't know if she would because 20 years later people change and, you know, most, most people change careers in 20 years or at least change places. But anyway, so he, um, she found him and she identified herself and the young man, she said, I don't know if you remember him. And he said, oh yes, I do. Are you a family member? She said, no, I'm I'm a friend of the family and of his friend. He said, well, she said, he's, he's still alive, he's doing well. What did he do, the doctor said. She explained just exactly what I, that nothing, he did nothing except allow prayer. And the doctor hung, hung up on her. <laughs> the doctor hung up on her. In the next few years, she tried to call him several times, left her number. But he was so convinced that prayer could not eliminate a cancer. He was so convinced that he wouldn't even listen to her, her story. And I wonder if sometimes we're so convinced, if we're so convinced of what, what we believe is true, that we won't even give an opening to another idea. Part of our affirmation was we're, we are here learners and listeners. And how do we learn? How do we learn? How do we grow? How do, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to open to new ideas. We have to open to a new way of looking at things, a way that we haven't been doing before up until now. We have to be willing to entertain the possibility that maybe there is something besides physical, physical matter, besides the physical universe. And of course, you know, the, we know that there's a quantum field. Now we know that, but 20 years ago, we didn't know that. Now we know that, yes, that energy is everything and that we are part of that everything that is the divine, that is the mind of God, the presence of God. So I'm not going to leave you with that negative story. I've got a really great story also to tell you. This is also hers. And she was, she was consulting with a family of young couple who were expecting their first child. And, um, and the woman had decided to do natural childbirth, no, um, no, no um, procedures, no surgery, no medication, natural. And she got, went into labor and she was there in the hospital and uh, she was not doing very well. The labor went on for hours and hours and hours, and I think it might have been in about its 30th hour. And she was really failing. She was very tired, and nothing was happening, and she was scared, and her husband was scared. And probably all of the people around them were afraid, too, because if she'd had, had the C-section or some kind of surgery, baby would have already been here. So finally she decided that she would have the surgery and uh, Rachel decided she would go to her office, which was in the same hospital but several stories above where the woman was having her, her baby. And she got, and meanwhile the husband, the new father, father-to-be, went out to the waiting area where his father was sitting. His father was an immigrant had come from Mexico, and first it started as a day laborer, and then 
had become a, a business owner and helped raise this wonderful family. He has four sons, so including this son. And the son came out to, spoke to him, and the father answered something in Spanish. And so then, then they, um, Rachel is on the elevator up to her office, and she gets a, a stat, status, status sheet of the woman that she's just given birth to a boy. She said she can't have had the surgery so quickly, so she calls, contacts the young man, the husband, and he, she said, what did they think happened? She was so struggling, and now she's got, her baby is already here. What do you think happened? What do they think happened? And the, husband, the young man said, well, the doctors have several ideas, but I know it was my dad. She said, your dad? He said, my dad is a great man. And while he was sitting in, after I told him he was sat in the, in the uh, waiting room, and he spoke to his new grandchild in his mind, she t he told him that it was safe here. He said, I know how everyone's so afraid. He told him that it was safe to come. He told him that he was looking forward to meeting him. He told him about going walking together and how he told him, he described in detail his dad and his three uncles that were waiting to meet him. He told him about the beauty that he would see in this wonderful country that they were so blessed to live in. And how everything good he described, the sunsets, the sunrises, the, the environment where they were living. Three pushes, and out he came a grandbaby, a boy. Three pushes after all of those hours in labor. Why? I believe that baby heard his grandfather. He heard, he got the welcome. He let go of the fear because the grandpa wasn't afraid. He was letting him know it's okay. It is okay to be here. So, we are the hands, we are the heart, we are the voice of spirit on earth. We are the voice of spirit on earth. We're the voice of spirit on earth and who we are and what we do is a blessing to the world. So who are we? Who are we really? We are the expressions of the divine mind and we are here to make a difference we are here to let our light shine. We are here to dance and sing and have great, great fun together. We're here to connect. We're here to be with one another. Here in this center, all of these things that I'm saying are true of you because we ex accept the divinity within every human being, everyone. We're all divine. We all are spirits, and we will not really have a birth or a death. We, we have a beginning physically, and we'll have an ending physically, but we are eternal beings. And I think this advanced course was about learning how to include everyone in our circle, absolutely everyone, to include the people that we don't agree with, to include the people that annoy us, to include those stub stubborn people that won't see things a different way. To include all those nasty liberals who are lying. To include all those nasty Republicans that are lying. <laughs> to include absolutely everyone, from the youngest to the oldest. Everyone is part of our community. And we, the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano, Valley is here, we are here to make a difference. We are here to help people when they forget who they are so that we can help people by, they can lean on us. Maybe not physically in the real space, but they can lean on us by calling us, contacting us, being present with us. We can remember that this is a great life 
And it's up to us to express that greatness. It's up to us to continuously prove the principle. What is this principle anyway? The principle simply is that it's done unto us as we believe. And our beliefs are far deeper and more powerful than our conscious thoughts, although we plant those conscious thoughts in subjective mind and they do become our beliefs. But our beliefs are so lodged, they're so deep, they're so wonderful, they're so wonderful. You know, the thing about sameness and oneness is important too, that this thing itself that is a one is creating a multiplicity. Every single one of us is unique. We look different, we think differently, we have different gifts to give, we have different um, challenges to overcome, we, have, we, have, we are different, but still we are one. Still we are one. There is no other but God, and that one is moving through each one of us. So, I think what we need to do this, this week, what I'm inviting us to do, is to be really aware of our words, whether they're thoughts or actual words, our actions, our thoughts, our words, our actions, and what, what we are doing. Are we blessing or are we cursing? In my youth, I used to really, really love some, um, some music that most musicians wouldn't find very musical. But one of the lyrics is, um, is a Chris Christopherson lyric, and it's never knowing and believing is a blessing or a curse. Never knowing and believing is a blessing or a curse. Well, it really depends on what you're believing. The next line is, or if the going up was worth the coming down. If the going up is worth the coming down. We're the whole. The Tao Te Ching says, we are pairs of opposites. We're here with these pairs of opposites. And yet, it's all from the one. Do you re realize that there are many people in this congregation, in this community, that we haven't seen for months? I was working in my office yesterday um, doing some preparation for today, and I heard a voice, and it was Pam Rock. And I haven't seen Pam Rock for six months, except I see her every Sunday. I see her so many times on Zoom. Thank God for technology. But I haven't seen her in person. I've kind of forgotten how tall she is, or maybe I've forgotten how short I am. But anyway, it's so nice to actually see those beings, but isn't it wonderful that we're connected even if we're not in the same physical space? We're connected by love, which is the strongest power there is. The I am that I am is the we are that we are. We are the ones. We are the presence. We are the power. That wonderful affirmation, and I think it might have gotten into your um, notes if you're, if you're watching the chat, because I sent it to Julie, so it might be in your notes. But that wonderful affirmation is a great thing to remember for our community. And if you think of everything can be a community. You have a community, this center community, but you have a community of family, you have a community of friends. What are you here together to do? To laugh, to learn, to love, to listen. Listening is so important. 
So what I know, it's, there's greater listening, there's greater laughter, there's greater loving, and there's greater learning. We are here on purpose. We are the ones that we've been looking for. And so it is. Now I'm going to pray. In this holy moment of right now, I recognize and know that there is only one power, one presence, one life. That this life that is a divine mind is in and through and as all creation. There is not a particle anywhere that is absent of it. For it is that infinite intelligence that is permeating permeating and penetrating every space of the universe, visible and invisible. And it's not a puny little power. It's not a sometimes power. It's not a power for the people who declare themselves blue or the ones that declare themselves red or the ones that declare themselves nothing. It's not a power for any particular group. It's a power of love, all of us. Every one of us have that power. We all are that power. Ah, so with great gratitude for, for this, great gratitude that there is only this one, and it is moving through me as optimism, as joy, as truth, as trust, as knowing only right action can take place. I move forward, and I know what I know for myself, I know for each and every one. I move forward with grace, I move forward with ease, I move forward with more and more prosperity, more aliveness and life, more joy than ever. I move forward grateful that I am part of this community. And in fact, I'm an essential part of this community. Our essence is who we are, and I give great thanks that this is so. I release this word to the action of, action of law. It's done, it's complete, and so it is. And now once more, Wade Wooldridge.
also. <laughs> it is now time for us to, uh, to remember that there is a law of circulation that we have an opportunity to participate in, that nothing is stagnant in the universe. Everything is a giving and a receiving. So, and regarding your money substance, we are blessed if you share it with us, and you are blessed for the sharing. I just want to give you a little update. Last week I told you that we were um, doing some reductions of salary, which we did, and we have our wonderful band that all took a reduction, and um, as I mentioned, our choir director, and also all of our so all of our um, vocalists. So we were doing our best to be fiscally um, intelligent, and we know that you're giving. I we know that we're we're giving as much as you can, and very grateful for everything you get, and knowing that really it's the thing itself within you that's doing the work. So let's read our prosperity affirmation together. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. We're going to close with the peace song. I know that each of you are belting it out at home just as you have all of the other things that you got to stand and sing for. So... Let there be peace on earth. Good, we are great, and so it is. So it is.